you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be filming today. I don't know what it is. I'm just really excited to sit and chat. And um, I just am uh, thrilled to be hanging with you all today. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a Q and A. It's definitely been a second since we've done that here. I used to do them far more often. I am so excited to sit and talk to you guys and do, I mean, I have a few things that I wanna share with y'all, um, a few little updates, a few things that I've grabbed this week that I wanna share, some things coming up, but we are gonna be doing, I'll say an epic Q&A, a, a really, really good, I feel it's gonna be a really good q and I feel over the years of doing this, you go through phases, I go through phases where Whatever's happening, whatever like the buzz situation is or whatever y'all are curious about. Oh, what does your husband do? What do you do? How do you do you work? Do you do that? Blah, blah. You know, what is this? And then there's the same questions over and over. So when you do a Q&A, it's like, okay, like a hundred of the same questions and then you pick and choose little things. Okay. And then other things, you know, from, from parenting to, you know, home stuff or just different things that I feel, do you guys feel what I'm saying? This group of questions that I've got, which I haven't even read them all. I like to keep it on the fly. I don't like rehearsed answers. We do that on our podcast too. I think that's why it is so good because we just kind of go and we're just free with what we say. So I don't like to prepare answers, but I do always, you know, I mean, I'm, if I'm going to decide to do a video like this, I'm going to scroll and see if I got good questions or if, you know. And y'all, there were things that I had never seen before, things that y'all had never asked before. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a different group. I don't know if it's you guys just now, I think, know every little nitty gritty thing about like, you know, that we do share on the podcast, heavy relationship things, detailed on details on details about home stuff, financial stuff, what we bought, what we've sold, like how we've kind of built what we have and our relationship, our job history. Okay, I know I sound like I'm saying like, oh, our job history, like it's some like resume or something. But I'm just saying, when you watch somebody for so many years, whether it's someone on television, whether it's someone that I follow, I want to know a little bit about their life if I'm going to follow them personally. So I do think these Q&A videos have always been so fun and valuable for that. But because we have the podcast and that's such a heavy spot for Brad and I and so like focused on this... I don't really do these as much here and I'm like, it's time. And the questions have reflected, I think that you guys, so many of you guys are listening over there and um, it's just different stuff that I'm excited to answer and interesting things. So we're gonna get into that. Um, before we get started, I wanna talk about just a few things. Um, okay, I'll link my jewelry. I always, like okay, my thing with jewelry, I want a basic layer, I want a basic set of jewelry from just a really great pair of like gold or silver hoops. I'll link to my favorite ones to, or just a pair like this, which I'm so into these little chunkers. I love this. I want a silver pair now. Um, and, and then just like a necklace like this. This is my most amazing, like favorite necklace that I have. Most amazing. Um, it's just like a layer, you know, and then jazz it up. If you want to wear something different, you can layer anything with it. So I'll link to all that. And you know, people, you know, silver's in. I'm all about mixing metals, wearing all gold, all silver, a mix of both. But I'm never gonna just say, okay, check out what you got and just wear silver. No, mix it in. Um, but I I really do love a thicker, smoother, like chunkier gold, like this. Simple, just that, right? But then I can't help myself, you know? I'm not really like take one item off kind of person. I'm a classic dresser and a classic person, but. But I, I do like to accessorize, and I don't always remove that piece before leaving the house, if you know what I mean. Um, these, you guys, do not miss out on these. These cardigans, oh my goodness, I have this in gray too. It's slightly different. The gray one's a little smoother. These are so great, and you know, we're all into like the relaxed denim, the baggy denim, the wide leg, which can read very, um, very casual. Um, I like... I, I like that look. I like a big wide leg denim that has like one rip or something. That's really in again, like the distressed denim on that silhouette is gonna start pushing because for so long we've done, I think like non-distressed denim. And then when those types of denim have come back, it's been very, you know, just like non-distressed, the distress is gonna start coming back in. So if you buy those, I would say grab a distressed pair. Um, and I'll link to my favorite pair. But my point is, I bought this at the same time that I kind of was getting, you know, back into that type of denim. 
and you don't want to look, well maybe sometimes, I don't know, I wouldn't wear like that ripped big relaxed denim with like a band t-shirt or something more, maybe sometimes, but I want to, I, I don't want to look like I'm in costume, you know, like, oh, she's looking edgy today. I want it to always look balanced with those pieces, and this is the perfect, almost like little grandma kind of cardigan, like buttoned up lady, literally, to throw on with those more trendier denim, like relaxed denim that we've been getting even in, in like a distress. That's what you have to do. You have to, um, you have to balance it out. And just the button detail, this is beautiful. Um, and then this dress, you guys, I don't really get nuts here, but I move all around. But it's one of those dresses, you know, kind of looks like those, those tops that I wear all spring and summer, just like the basic cardigan, you know, it's kind of like my uniform, but it's a dress. So like I have my, you know, my house slippers on and I put on my sneakers with it, wear it anywhere, wear it with a hoodie, but then you can dress it up, you can lounge around the house. I think it's literally a lounge dress, but it is so comfortable and um, really flattering and cute. And just, I think like a staple piece. Now this, not this week, but the next, um, be sure, if you're not already, to follow my LTK. I will link to it below. It's my, I post there every day, daily outfits. You see people and you're having to watch these like, you know, walk around with me and let me show you my outfit every day. I just post it on LTK. You can look, you can search through anything I've ever, it's easy peasy. Um, daily looks, anything you've ever been curi curious about. But this next week, March 8th, I'm going to do a video that day because I'm going to have like a big try out of things. There's going to be a huge sale that's app exclusive. So you, when you shop through those posts on the app, when you follow me, then you'll get the discount. Thank Abercrombie, um, Anthropology, really, I mean, tons of places. Okay, you guys. So um, prepare for that. Kind of follow me there so that you can, you know, start like adding some things so that when it goes live, you can check out and I'll, you know, it's easy peasy. You'll know what to do. Um, and then they're doing a new thing where like, which I hate it. YouTube did this years ago too, where like, you know, you have all these subscribers you built up, these people that I've never asked to subscribe that truly want to subscribe. And then they change and you get like hundreds of thousands of views, which correlate to your like 500,000 subscribers, a million, so however many you have, it correlates, right? Not everybody watches everything. And certainly after 16 years here, not everybody's watching. So I get the drop off, but um, maybe like 10 years ago, they changed it with it. Well, now for your subscribers, see, they have to click the bell. And I'm like, they've already subscribed. Just send it to their feed. I never asked anyone to do that. And, um, you can tell, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like people kind of dropped off and that's fine because I'm not begging. Um, LTK has kind of done a similar thing where like, yeah, you follow me. I have a ton of followers over there, but if you want to see my posts like in your feed and you want to like see there just when you follow, there's a little bell. Okay, tap the bell, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, but a few pieces that I would say to check out beforehand, this trench coat, you guys, this is gonna be like a whole thing. Now, um, I would say, like look, these things do sell out. So I'm not saying like, oh, get it now or wait until the sale. Because you know, when I got mine, it was discounted. They just run random sales. But the sell through LTK is gonna be really, really good. This trench coat, so cute. It's actually waterproof, so it's not just like a BS trench coat, okay? That like is just decorative, you know? It's actually waterproof, super cute. Um, I am gonna wear this on an upcoming trip with this like, I'll, I'll link to it, but it's like this jumpsuit that's like, it looks almost like this, but look, you can wear it with this, it's cute. Just like leggings, a top like this hat and it's just easy and it's cute and they come in a lot of different colors but I think a trench coat is gonna be I mean for me it is a classic thing I need to steam it because I really haven't worn it out yet just got it a couple days ago um but I do believe these are gonna be things that um that you're gonna want for spring a trench coat such a perfect item for spring with wet weather and then the whole like mob wife aesthetic, which I did get a question on this. Someone was like, how do you feel about the mob wife aesthetic? And I'm like, I get it because it's just something that we did years ago. And it's just, if you ever see anyone going too hard on something from like the whole classic luxury or quiet luxury to like the bare face, like clean girl aesthetic, you know, that's going to be like 
out the window in a hot second and we're gonna do the exact opposite so that's why it's like don't lean so into things as I show you this fur coat no but I've had some fa some faux ones over the years this one is faux it looks right I do not like a faux coat that looks like acrylic like plastic you know what I'm saying like a stuffed animal like a bad one that you'd win at a carnival no offense but you guys know what I'm talking about um, this one is really, really good. And, um, oh my gosh, like who cares what kind of makeup you're wearing? Who cares what your hair looks like? Who cares what you're doing? Throw this on. So good. Um, and I have some like longer, you know, like coats that are more like teddy bear coats or whatever, but I think a kind of this, like the volume of a fur coat that's kind of shorter, not short cause it's not short, but you know what I mean? Um, I love a long coat, and I've, I've showed you guys those really great ones from Walmart, and um, hopefully you picked those up and you didn't, like, resist that, because you, you missed, you seriously missed out if you did. Um, but, you know, I just wanted a shorter one. I'll link to those, and if they don't have that exact fur coat in stock anymore, I will um, link to some of my favorite similar ones, because there's a lot of good ones that brands are having now. Quickly, I want to talk about these. Before we get into the question, this is going to be a really long video, you guys, and it's fine. Just settle in. This lip product, the Lawless Forget the Filler, I love the one in the pot that's just kind of like a clear pink. It's really pretty. And I've used a complete tube of this. It's just the Forget the Filler lip balm in a stick. And the pink marshmallow is kind of like a clear pink. I've used a whole stick of that. And on the daily, I've been using like that Nivea lip balm. Um, I've, I just, you know, I, my lips get dry. And I'm like, I want something that's a little more exciting. So I was gonna repurchase that again, and then I saw they have it in different colors. I am always, that's what I'm wearing today, the one in Cupid. I'm always so turned off. And it's one of those stupid things that makeup companies do when you've kind of reviewed things as long as I have, or you've been into makeup, or you're just, you've just lived and you like shopped for makeup. You have those pet peeve items, you're like, why do makeup companies keep doing this? Why can't I find a good tinted lip balm that does not make me look like I've just gotten like my lips rubbed off or that I've had like, you know, maybe I've been like smooching in a bad way or I've, you know, not like in a cute like, oh, you look flushed. It's just like smeared or it looks like your lips are chapped and like, ugh. you guys know what I mean. It can be like, oh, well, this one's tinted purple. This one's tinted light pink. They all look the same. Like, why did this brand you know, create 10 different colors of something where it's all gonna look like that gross, stainy effect that just does not look good on anyone. This brand, I mean, oh my gosh, I was so skeptical, but I saw the pictures like of what they looked like in the swatches and I'm like, hmm. So they're so moisturizing. This one is called Cupid and it's kind of like an orchidy look, um, which is very 90s. I remember I had this wet and wild lipstick that was, I mean, I was probably Olivia's age and I remember watching Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. And Christina Applegate was wearing like this purpley, like orchidy color, like when she's driving the car. And I remember I would like pause it and I'd be like, that looks just like my, see, I've clearly been a little for beauty for a long time. Um, but the Cupid color, beautiful. And it actually doesn't turn, because I've had this on for like two, three hours. I did this my makeup earlier today. It doesn't turn a gross pink later. I also got the color Baby Doll, which looks like it's gonna be a really bright, gross pink, but it's not. It's a really pretty light pink. Um, here, you can see the color a little better. Here's the, um, the Cupid, which is the color I'm wearing today. So Cupid is this one, and then the Baby Doll is this one. So I need to do my nails again. I think I'm gonna do that tonight. Brad and I are doing a little anniversary, late anniversary, late. Valentine's getaway. So I need I need to do my nails. Oh, looking bad. We're gonna get to the questions soon, I promise. But I just want to talk about this really quick. Kim Kardashian dropped the um, candles that she uses in her home, the exact ones, you guys. And she says she only uses this candle, the jasmine diptyque, and she only uses the roses in her bathroom. We've talked about these, okay? Y'all aren't late on this game. We've talked about this for years. But I'm gonna say. Okay, and I already had, I already have this one. It's nice, but it smells like, like lilies, a little funeral homey, 
but nice. It's fine. It's creamy. It's beautiful. And I really actually like, phew, that sounds bad. Roses is just, y'all know we've had, it's just basic rose. The Bay, the B-A-I-E-S is my all time favorite. That one is like what I want my home just to smell like. It's like a signature scent, but I've moved from the Bay. Notice I don't have one to show to this. This is one that I've had for year, not this exact one. This one's new. A friend gave me this one for Christmas. But I've had the giant one many years ago. I got the big white giant one. I've had the big green one. I've had countless ones of this fig. And this is, I think, the scent that you want. I think this is the most beautiful diptyque scent. It's creamy. It's figgy. It's a little greeny scented. The perfect home scent. It's not going to smack you in the face with perfume. It's warm. It's soft. It's inviting. It's clean. And, okay, with diptyque... They're beautiful, okay? They're just so simple and they're pretty just to sit wherever. And when you get done with it, always save the jars. I use these, I have a bunch of these in my, um, like the closet where I keep all my beauty stuff. They're lined up and I've got like some things sitting in them, some tubes of face masks and stuff. They're really cute jars. Um, this is a great holder and it's actually sold as a diffuser holder, um, but I will link to this. It fits a diptyque candle and this this basic size perfectly. And I will link to that. It's got really pretty gold. Um, so I'll link to that. So we'll talk about that. Okay, we'll link to that. Let's get into the questions. So one of the ones that I, that really stood out to me, and it was one of the first ones talking about YouTube. It says, do you still like doing YouTube? Do you like, you know, or do you prefer other platforms? Um, did I talk about this in the beginning? Things are redundant when I was talking about like our podcast. People say, oh, listen to our podcast. Also, you can watch our podcast um, on YouTube and on this. I'm like, what do you think I've been doing? This is just a glorified podcast I've been doing for 16 years then because it's no different. But our podcast that Brad and I do is so different. I don't ever want to do anything redundant. So when you say like, do you like YouTube or other platforms? This is the only place I could do this. We could, you could post little short, you know, short form things that are, I feel a little, sometimes impersonal or whatever, if you just want a quick tip or you're just following some, but I think if you're truly following somebody and you, I think long form or just talking about something is different here than just like, oh, how do you um, do just something, quick, whatever. Let me just check out a short clip for that, you know, on Instagram or wherever you'd find that on TikTok or on a reel or whatever. Um, so there's things here that I wouldn't do there. And I like this. It's easy. It's fun. Y'all know I don't do anything I don't want to do. Um, and I don't know. Oh, you shouldn't. I'm not gonna be, I'm not forced to be doing this. I would be doing something else. I'd be finding a, something else to do, you know. Um, you have to, with things like this too, I think it shows if it's not genuine or if you do kind of not enjoy. I truly do enjoy this. It's fun, obviously. Like we've never had a lull and it's like, as long as I'm just myself and I'm just sharing things, why would I stop? And I think sometimes when you see people, you know, that do change it, maybe they were doing it for just for money and then, you know, they married somebody or they, you know, got a different job or whatever. Well, then it's like, oh, I don't want to be doing that anymore. That's fine. Um, or like maybe you were doing something you didn't want to do. Maybe you were forcing something and then you're like, I can't do that anymore. I feel like I've truly from the beginning done this from a good place, from a fun place, from connecting with you guys. Why would I stop doing that? There's just no reason. Um, so I really enjoy it. Like I said, I don't care if one person watches or a million people. Okay. Like it's not about that. It's never been about numbers for me. Um, and because of that, I think things have evolved better in other ways. And, um, you know, and again, like, I'm not going to be doing some big thing. Like, oh, I'm not going to be, like, showing my outfit every day and doing a big video of this. You can go to my LTK picture. Boom. There's my links. Like, it's just, I just don't want to waste anybody's time as you're watching this video. That's probably going to be an hour long. Um, but my point is, is, like, I this, this video, I think, warrants a long video because we're talking, we're connecting. And I think so much of that is being lost. Um, nowadays there's, everyone's an influencer, which great. Everyone has a voice. Everyone has a thing and it's wonderful. But that I think we're consuming so many different things that maybe we're losing some of those personal connections that we used to have with certain YouTubers or certain people that we really like to follow. And I'm sorry, I'm just never going to lose that. I'm never going to give that up. I'm never going to stop that because I do value 
I value them. Yeah. Um, and preferring other platforms for what? I can't do it. I'm not doing this anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a platform for every different thing I do is very intentional and very different and specific to that platform. So, no, I'm not just because TikTok jumps off. I'm going to start firing up a TikTok to then start like, oh, because I feel like I have to. I'm going to start doing forced things there. No, you do know what I'm saying. It's just not my vibe. But you, you got to do what you want to do. What would you have done differently during your pregnancy? Oh, she's pregnant with her first. What I would have done first during my pro differently during my pregnancy? I would say nothing. Um, I, I feel like I did pretty good. I was very cautious, like no caffeine, no lunch meats, no this, that. I was like, Tiffany, just calm the F down. I probably would have dabbled more, okay? Um, you, but you live and you learn, you know what I mean? But um, I also, I really liked the fact that I didn't get caught up in the classes or the parenting books because you're not going to know any of that. Talk to your, this is what I would have rather done, okay? Lay off the parenting books. Throw that shit out the window. I read one chapter of what to expect when you're expecting, thinking, oh, I'm going to do I bought all the books. Read a couple chapters. Turned me off. Made me nervous about things. I shouldn't have been nervous about. You're pregnant. You're already going to be, like, nervous about things. You don't, don't add that, okay? Don't don't put that on me. Don't, I don't need that, okay? Um, so don't. Your, your motherly instinct, it'll kick in. You'll know what to do, okay? You can be looking in your brain to, like, the book, you know, what did chapter 11 say? Da, da, da. No. Um, now, if you, it could help you mentally. That's what I was thinking. It's going to help me feel more prepared, but it doesn't actually prepare you. What I wish I would have done, maybe talk more to, and I had so many friends that had, had babies, but you just, you do forget, I guess. I wish I would have known a little more about like, okay, you're going to have to wear a diaper for months. This is what's going to happen. Um, when you give birth, you may want to start, um, you know, hitting the fiber and the greens that week before. So you're not worried about, you know, wedding, which you will while you're giving birth nightmare. Okay. Things I did not know that no one tells you women, we got to do a better job of preparing, <laughs> of preparing our friends, but the best thing you don't want to scare the hell out of them. But, um, maybe just talk to like family more, maybe like know what to expect. But then that's the thing. I think my, my mom, my grandma, they were just like, she'll know, she'll figure it out. What are we going to tell her? You know what I mean? Um, but, but afterwards, something I really wish I would have done. And I wasn't doing this from like a prideful place. I was doing this from a place of Brad and I both worked from home. Um, and I thought, I'm not bothering anybody. I can watch my own child. I didn't grow up with a babysitter or nannies or anything. And I thought, I can do the same thing. But I think a lot of times, like, even people that I knew, like, my mom, or my, my mom had a really heavy, like, relationship with my grandma. And, you know, I'm close with my mom and my grandma, but I don't think I leaned on them. Like, and not from a place of I didn't want their help, but I just, or even Brad's parents, like, I just never had that like I never they were there and they were available but maybe that was on me I should have like crawled a little to people and said help me because things do get overwhelming you will get overwhelmed but we figured it out and Brad and I did great but I do look back and think gosh there's a value in a night nurse if you can afford it and I know some people are like I don't even think that's a bougie thing. See, I'm someone that doesn't hire a housekeeper. Like, I don't, I'm not bougie with things like that, which that's not even a bougie thing. You know what I mean? I think it's just like in your mindset or how you grew up or something you weren't used to, so you just don't do it. But, you know, so a nanny was never anything, I would think. But find someone you trust and hire a night nurse, I would say, for like five days a week where they'd come in and they could help that, help you get some sleep because you need it for your sanity. Do what you got to do to get a night nurse. So if I had another kid, oh my God, especially now, I'm too old. I'd be like, night nurse, day nurse, who you got? What you got? Move in, family. Uh, I'm a busy woman. Would you ever do a recreate of your old, old with an E at the end, which tracks looks from ages to my ye olde looks. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. That was really funny. Uh, from ages ago would be fun and nostalgic. I don't know if that's the kind of nostalgia I'm looking for. Um, shamefully, these things still do live on the internet. You know, your mom is always right. Like, anything that you post online is going to be there forever, which for me, great. Um, you know, I wasn't doing anything bad, but some of those old videos, I'm like, 
maybe we don't need to look at those. And, and I don't know that those things should be recreated. <laughs> They're there. Okay, if you want to venture into that, you can. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm looking for that kind of nostalgia. I mean, we're just moving forward, right? I'm not, that's the thing, too. I don't, wanna, I don't like doing things for bits. I, I just don't like a bit, okay? I, I don't want to dress up my husband and make him do my makeup blindfold. I'm like, I don't know. I just always feel like that's a little, I don't say cringy or just, I just don't like it. I don't like watching it. I don't like doing it. I just don't do things for a bit. And uh, I ain't doing that. Oh my God. Oh, Twilight's having a resurgence. Oh my God. Uh, look back at those videos or don't. Um, back in the day when I was like obsessed with Twilight. And I was doing like Twilight inspired makeup. What? What? No wonder a lot of people like bounced out of here. No, I'm kidding. Um, a lot of questions about homeschool parents. Is Olivia homeschool? Homeschool, homeschool. How would you know homeschool? Okay. I have so much information on this. The why, why we did on my, um, on our podcast. We've done so many episodes about that and just specifics. And at the end of the day, like I, f I feel like she is so far ahead, like she's getting, I feel a better education. I have a degree in early childhood education and child development and stuff. That was a big thing for me. I feel like anyone can do it. You don't have to have that degree, but I do think that helps me. But that was something I would have never considered was not on my radar. I was obvious. I was honestly very judgy. There was a stigma, which I feel like is lessening now because people are realizing they are doing what they want to do with their children for their children's own good and not listening to the uh, honestly, the BS that other people say. Um, no one's going to do, I think, what's bad for their child. I think everyone's going to do the best they can for their child. And I was all for, like, take their schools to. And it wasn't because it was, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was right. So many things kind of, I don't want to say fell into place, but the way it worked out was good for us. Um, a certain situation with her first school and, like, things that had changed and I just thought, okay, and I can't explain it. Sometimes there's a divine intervention. There's a, I believe, so strongly in trusting your gut. I believe so much that, like, you can't just go with the, the crowd. You have to listen to your intuition. And when I would think about homeschooling her, it always felt right. Overwhelming, because I didn't know what the heck I was doing in the beginning. But that felt right, whereas other decisions felt icky. And so I just listened to that. And it was the hardest I would say like six months where we were trying to figure out if we were going to do it. I was so back and forth. I wasn't trusting my instinct. And the second I did, we went for it. It's the best decision. This is our fourth year doing it. And I will never look back. I love it. She can do whatever she wants going forward. She's got friends, activities. She's, I feel when I see her socialize, she is so much, I guess, because she's with more, she's with us. We, we talked to her, spent a lot of time with her. She, you know, has other adults you know, from people and activities that she looks up to or, you know, anybody, friends, family, like we're around a lot of people. I feel like she's more respectful. I feel like she talks and communicates, um, I don't want to say better, but in a really good way, rather than if you see, like, there's a lot of kids that do go to school that communicate great, it's fine, whatever. Um, but don't ever say, like, oh, it's a socialization thing, because some of the kids that I do see that are around just other kids all day picking up bad habits and good habits too. There's pros and cons of both. There's things that she misses out on that she'll never get, you know, or that she will never get back from these years that she's homeschooled. And there's things that kids that have gone to public schools have dealt with that I'm so thankful that my child has not had to deal with and that will help her going forward. So there's pros and cons. I'm not pro homeschool or anti this. I went to school to be a teacher. I believe in public school system. I believe in a private school. I believe in anything that you want to do. But it goes wrong when you start thinking what's right for other people's children. But I get a lot of questions because it is something that I think so many people are curious about, but they just have the stigma or they just don't understand. And I really talk about it a lot. Um, we have talked about it a lot in the podcast, but it is wonderful. Um, she is so far ahead, and I do feel like she'll probably be able to, I don't want to say like um, graduate early or whatever, but it's looked at the same when kids go col to college as an accredited private school program. It's no different on paper. Um, and I know someone's like, nah, yeah, if someone's looking at the name of it, it's no different. I and We're looked at as a private program. Like you enroll it, you know, follow the rules with your county. Someone's like, no, 
it's different in every state follow those rules and even like consult there's so many things that you can do which is really helpful for, for, for us um, websites which have like lawyers that will always keep you legally like doing exactly what you want, need to do um, and following all the things that you need to do for your state because some states are very picky. Georgia is actually a pretty lenient state um, as far as certain hoops you have to jump through but you still have to do a lot like you know you have to through the county every year and testing this is our first year of standardized testing. Um, it's not easy but neither is anything but I'm proud of it and I'm so thankful that we've done it um, and advice for homeschooling parents would be just do it if you know that's right for your kids do what's right for your kids don't listen to what other people have to say that have never homeschooled before and that don't know like I said someone one time was like how's your kid gonna get into college and I'm looking at her like how the hell is your kids gonna get into college you know what I'm saying and people because she didn't understand and so I'm just I'm not like, oh, this is the way it has to be. No. If Olivia next year was like, I'm going to school, I'd be like, no. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's all about, like, I say don't be so staunch one way or the other. Just do what's right for your kid. And homeschooling parents, um, keep it up. Like, keep doing what you're doing. And I've met a lot of homeschooling par parents that are, like, just like me and cool. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you don't think that. I always had an image and a stigma and a stereotype that was not correct. There's a lot of weirdos everywhere, okay? Let's just let's just normalize that. Okay, how was your heart monitor experience? I did go to Hush about this the other day too, and I talked about it pretty in depth on the podcast and stuff, but I didn't share a lot more here. Um, it was fine, okay? I went through all that. Oh my gosh, but like, they thought I had tachycardia or whatever. I was feeling kind of out of breath, and I wasn't feeling, I was honestly feeling unwell. Zero changes in my lifestyle, zero changes in what I was eating, consuming, doing. There was nothing different. It was just there was a change. And um, I wore the heart, heart monitor. I went and had, you know, the I had an EKG. I had an echocardiogram, which that was pretty, not intense, but that one was a long thing. And then they did this thing where they put, like, it was weird. It was called a bubble test where they put, like, air, which sounds terrifying, through an IV, which I don't even ask, okay? But I thought, okay, whatever, I'm here. If I if I croak out, at least I'm in a hospital. But it was fine, okay? Um, to like see, so I'm glad that I got it all checked out. There was nothing wrong with my heart. It was fine. Um, it was a little elevated at certain times. I thought, is it because of anxiety? Is because I'm just so happy to be at the doctor? I'm so excited to be here. Um, I don't know. But when they checked like the results from those couple weeks of wearing the heart monitor. It was at a good resting rate for a lot of times. Never know what could be causing something, but it stopped. And I'm thankful it did. It kind of weaned off a little. I'm not having that fluttery feeling. I'm not having that anymore. Odd, but, you know, whatever. It happened, and I'm, I'm fine that I got checked out. Okay, so no answer. And I'm glad that nothing was wrong. Um, but everything's fine. And a lot of how and when do you know that your child's going to be an only child? Like, I know everybody's so family planning and people are planning their families. So I, I'm so on on that. I'm, I'm so, like, agreeing with that. Like, you have to have a plan. I get that. But I was never the type that was like, I'm going to have three kids. I'm going to have four kids. I was like, I, I want to see what kind of partner I have. I want to build a marriage. And then, you know, then if, is this a person I want to be a parent with, you know? And I knew I always wanted to be a parent. But also, like, I know people that don't have kids. That's fine. And, you know, so that was never a thing. But, um... But when we had her, it was just wonderful. And I guess I always thought Brad and I were pretty like, we're not going to do this till this is just right. We're so planned. We're so, you know, we want everything to be good. But really, like, we're not. Because I don't want to say we kind of just, okay, let's have a baby. It kind of happened when it happened. And then after that, it wasn't like, okay, now we can't have another baby. Now we will have another baby. It was just like... We're good, like this is fun. You know, I just feel like we just got into her groove and there's nothing sweeter than this like dynamic. She has cousins, she has friends, she has, you know, people that we see and friends and family and all kinds of people. I don't know, I think I there's a value in all kinds of different ways that people grow up. Um, and what's wrong with having an only child? It's great, it's fun. It's, you know, we have so much fun together and it would be great if you had more kids too. Again, with the homeschooling or with, how many children you have there's not a right or wrong this is just what we're doing and it's working and um 
yeah, I'm not going to have another kid. Unless I'm like a late in life, like, oopsie mom, you know. But I, I'm happy. I'm like, I'm so happy and content. And I think that's what I've always tried to do is just be in the moment. When I had my, when I had Olivia, I wasn't thinking, okay, now what? Now what's next? I'm like, I'm just in this moment. And I guess we were just in that moment so much to where we did cultivate such a good family life and such a good fun time or, or just lived in the moment that we weren't like, okay, what's next? On to the next, on to the next. It's like, I don't know. I, it just didn't happen and that's great. And I don't know. I just, I, I really, it's, it's been great. I don't know. Um, and again, what's your favorite part about being a mom of an only child? I know we're going to get into some different things, but I'm just trying to hit some questions that were asked a lot. Um, before we get into some of these different ones, which I was, was really exciting. Um, my favorite part about being a mom to an only child, I think I have a lot of great things to say about being a mom of multiple kids. It's just being a mom in general. I just, I love the, um, the time that I can spend with her and the attention that you can give. But at the same time, I can really, um, just with me and her and Brad, I feel like it's easier to do things. It's easier to travel. It's easier to get around and, and do what you got to do. You, you do what you got to do, right? If you got one kid, if you got six kids, you're going to do what you got to do and you'll make it work. But I don't know anything different. So I don't know. I'm like, just being a mom is my favorite part. It's, someone asked about, and again, I think I mentioned this at the beginning when I was talking about our podcast and stuff. Someone said, what's your different streams of income? Do you and I know that sounds like a really, like, personal question and it kind of is but I know people are um curious because if I watch I'm like what do you do for a living you know I get that so sometimes when people see this they don't realize like there's so many different things that you do on the back end of like being on YouTube or working with different brands or doing different things um not making money from like or you know tons of sorry that was my foot tons of money from like oh views on youtube i need tons of i like that i don't have to play that game i like that i've been smart and i've turned it into other things i'm not desperately always trying to start businesses or doing we've from the beginning when you know we invested our money wisely we have different things that we've done there um when you don't see us going to a nine to five well for so many years, you know, we invested money in different things. You know, we were smart when we bought our first house. There's so many things that are so detailed that I could get into and we have on our podcast and on videos in the past. But I feel like it gets cringy when you do talk about money and stuff like this. But it's not even something I could even really describe. It's just being smart about things. Um, I think it's just about like doing something that makes you happy. And again, not thinking what other people think you should be doing. My whole life it was like, okay, well... I'll feel better if I just tell somebody that I have this particular job. Oh, I'm a teacher. Oh, I'm a, if you, oh, I'm a doctor. I'm a mail carrier. I work at the, this restaurant, X, Y, Z. That's an easy thing. But when I tell people what I do, it's hard to explain because it's like, yeah, I started a YouTube channel years ago, started making money there. Um, more than, than, you know, you can't really make money from YouTube's ads anymore, like that you could actually live off of, you know, whatever. That was crazy. I didn't go out and buy something nuts. Like, I saved a lot of that. I was always smart with that. Brad and I, you know, were smart when we got our first place and bought a house, like, for a really, really great price then when we decided that we then had enough money where we could save to move and justify moving. We didn't sell that. We bought this at a good price. We've been here for, like, what, almost 12 years now, which is crazy, 11, 12 years, and we rented that house for years, rented that old house for years. We were landlords for years. We dabbled in different rentals and ideas of that. Oh, what are we going to you know, do with that? Maybe we'll make a business out of that. Well, then when the market changed, we sold stuff and got out of that and then put that money away. We didn't take it and say, oh, now we got to move on up. I don't want to be working and scrounging the rest of my life. I like to ball on a budget. I like to save most of my money. Um, and I like to... Um, to know that like I'm okay, you know, like I never want to have that feeling of like, oh, well now I'm living in a whatever kind of house, but you know, ooh, gotta pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you do have to pay for everything, but I like to definitely live within my means and make wherever you are beautiful. And I look at this home and I look at where we are and I'm so thankful. And I love our house so much. And um, I love how everything has worked out. I see people, well, why don't you move? Or why don't, and I'm like, 
Why would I? Why, to prove something or to then be what, living beyond my means? Like, every, I, no, I wanna be, I want to be comfortable. I wanna know that my house is paid for and that I can do what I wanna do and invest all the extra money that I have somewhere else because I've already done the real estate thing. I don't wanna keep buying things like that. That's a great investment. But then I took that and Brad and I invested our money in other things. Get a financial advisor um, and they'll handle like your investments and stuff like that. And you know, I wanna retire young. That's something that I told our financial advisor when I was in my early 20s, you know? And I think that's a good goal and to start early. Okay, this is crazy. Um, do you wanna travel outside the US more? No, and if I did, I would not, no. But like I've been different places. I want to do different things. You know, we have different plans, but my goal is never just like, I gotta get here, gotta get there, gotta get everywhere. I've been to Europe. I've been to a lot of different places, but there's so many things I love to see and do, but my goal isn't just always, oh, I gotta be outside of the US to like, but I do want to eventually, but um, you to see different places, but just when the time's right, you know what I mean? Like I just, I don't know. I just wanna make sure that, um, you know, I don't know. And then my kid was so young for so long and now I think is a good time to really start doing more of that type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? How was Livy doing with third grade math? She's actually doing fourth grade math, which is crazy, which I have to look and do things like, okay, what is she doing? Um, she was doing something the other day and I had to like, it's like multiple digit, like multiplication, like when you're multiplying like thousands by thousands. And the way that you, the, okay, the way that, you guys know if you're a teacher, okay. We grew up learning it very differently than how you have to do now with all the like regrouping. So you guys, I don't wanna get into it. So when I was in college learning to be a teacher, um, that's kind of how I learned to teach math. And I was like, what the hell is this now? And then when I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be a teacher, good. And I have to wipe that from my brain. Well, now I'm fully like teaching my child how to do that. But then I'm also teaching her other ways. And I, I like that I can do that, you know? Um, but she, just with like division and stuff, you don't realize, even if you're a fairly smart person and you always did good with math and you went to school to be a teacher, you know all the things, it's a lot. And there's some things like the other day she had to show me and I was like, that's not right. She's like, I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute, why am I blanking out? Like, what is this? And she's like, look, mom, this is how you do it. So she's like teaching me a lot of stuff. Um, but the math is, um, the math is mathin', and uh, it's a lot. Um, okay. Does she have a homeschool teacher? Or do you do it all? I do it all. I love your new lips. Any tip for a newbie? Well, these are my old lips. I haven't had my lips done in a I want to say a couple years, I have them. Um, they last a long time, okay? Last a real long time. I I think maybe a year ago, I have a scar here that sometimes it will like start tracking up and she dissolved a little, but we didn't, I don't think we, we didn't add anymore. Um, so every now and then I do that so I don't get a little lump um, from my scar, but, which I don't know what that is, it's just weird. But, um, okay, advice for a newbie. Someone wrote me the other day and a lot of people have always, when they ask about lips or whatever, which I feel like that was the best thing I ever did. Like there's times when I've looked, I'm like, maybe a little too much. Well, then I just let them go down, whatever. Um, but when I started, I started so small that no one even noticed. And then I worked up, worked up little by little. Kept going back to my injector who I love, Melissa or Missy, she goes by Missy, at Aesthetic Specialty Center in Roswell. She's so good. But just there's so many great people where you find someone that you like and trust that is going like look at pictures of people that they've done in the past go off of a wreck of someone that you know that looks good um they have to have i mean just check their accreditation you know just check what you know check them out but it's so different for everybody i hate it when people even say oh there's different mess methods like the they call it different methods of how everyone's so different i don't like that i don't like i just like an injector to know what to do based on what you look like. Um, I look back at pictures of myself before, and I don't want to say I don't recognize myself, but I do look very different, and it's just lips. I have filler nowhere else on my face. Um, I do get Botox, but you can't tell when I get that either because I can still move and stuff. It just smooths out my forehead. It doesn't change my expressions. Um, but the lips really balanced out my face because I have a larger nose. I have a prominent jaw. And larger features and my lips were very small and they would they were kind of concave even just smiling my smile was always really gummy which fine but having a larger lip I just feel like it's more flattering for me and if someone's judgy about it you can't be judgy if you've ever worn lipstick if you've ever worn lip line if you wake up in the morning and you think you look better with makeup on it's all the flipping same shirt there's more of a risk 
but don't shame a woman for vanity reasons. Oh, you're getting that, you're getting that. Well, you've been putting on lipstick every day of your life. You know what I mean? So let's just stop with the judginess. But I do love the way it looks. I like that, you know, I don't have to wear makeup sometimes. And I just like the way that I look. And that's what it's all about. Um, but go small. Smaller is better. And this is what I was going to say. People that always ask me, how many syringes do you have? What do you ask for? You've gone wrong. Do not ever ask anyone how many syringes they get and think that's going to you know, go to you or that's going to somehow translate to you. Same with boobs. Don't ever ask anybody what CCs they have unless if they're your carbon copy bone structure, same exact starting from the same, which nobody starts from the same amount. If I said, oh, I have, I have one whole syringe in my lips and then you go and you say, give me one syringe, but you have a little bit of more natural lip, you're going to look like, you know, but like if you've got nothing, like my lips were like eating that stuff up. Like you couldn't even hardly tell when she would do it because I had nothing to start with. The tiniest bit will really make a difference. And I think these things that you can do that can balance out your face without, not that I ever felt like I needed to do anything, but I feel like it just made my whole face look more balanced. I think my profile looks prettier. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just, I, th I like, I like that. Again, like I could cry, like so many sweet things that you guys wrote that are just nice. Are you going to add any more pets to the family? Any more kids or dogs in the future? Okay, y'all. Dogs. Let's talk about dogs. Um, we talked about this on the podcast. We are... Ugh, I really miss Waylon. I miss him so much. I miss him, obviously. I missed him from the time I knew he was like declining. You know, you just miss what... You know, you just grieve your pet. Do you know what I'm saying? And I miss him. I miss him so much. I want like a derpy dog to put my face and live on. You know, I miss him. And I just feel like he's here. Isn't that weird? I just feel like he's here with me. Okay, I'm going to start getting weird. Um, No, but I I feel like, and his, his toys are still in the same spot that they were. I have his little toy chest that I will never get rid of. I'll give it to another pet one day. But I, yeah, I don't know. But, but again, like, we're not the type that's like, oh, let's go out and get this certain breed. Let's go find it. I just want a dog to come into my life that needs me. Or maybe I need to go find him, you know? I don't know. Huh. Oh, this is sad and it's going to get heavy. Um, best place to stay in Vegas? Oh, this is fun. Brad and I were just talking about a Vegas trip the other day because before we had Olivia, Brad and I were married for a very long time before we had Olivia. Um, you know, we've been together now 20 years. We, were, we just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary. Um... Oh, we did. So we had her eight, seven, eight, seven years into our marriage. I got pregnant. And we just had a ball. Like, not that we still don't. I, mean, I feel like we even have more fun now. But we go to Vegas, like, a couple times a year. We're, like, doing all kinds of stuff. We've stayed everywhere. I've taken some sh kind of shameful last-minute girls' trips where we've stayed at some not-so-great places. Then there's some new places, too. Um, you know. My favorite thing to do, though, like, on the, if you're going to go to Vegas, you got to stay at just one of those basic hotels on the Strip. There's so many nice places that are kind of off the Strip or some newer places. But I would say I really like the Wynn. I'm just going to name them. I mean, I like them all. I've never stayed at the Bellagio, although I really want to. We would go there a lot. Um, we would stay at Caesars most of the time, and you could get really great rooms. It's, there's some really bad rooms at Caesars. Like, there's some, like, dungeon areas of Caesars that we would stay in sometimes, and we'd open up the window, and it was literally just, like, not a window. It was, like, a roof that you could see, like, ooh, and, like, air, AC, you know. So there's some real, like, doozy places to stay there. But when you check into Caesars, just slip the guy a 50, even if you book the crappiest room, and they'll give you a real nice room. Okay, I know that sounds funny. But we've stayed some really nice rooms there, which I like. I love the Venetian where else did we stay? The MGM, I stayed with my sister one time, and it was nice, but it was just, they're all, I mean, you're going to have so much walking everywhere, but um, the MGM was good, but I don't know. It, it, it's kind of more, I like a more fancy, not fa it's not that it's not fancy, but I like like a Bellagio or a Caesars or a Venetian type vibe. Win the win, I really like the win. Um, and if you're going to go to Vegas, you're going to be spending money, so just, yeah, suck it up and just stay somewhere cool. Do you have any type of exercise that you follow? Brad and I were talking about this this year. This is our year, I think, of, like, getting back in shape because when I broke my foot last June, I didn't realize how much that was going to affect me, affect everything. Like, I still, the other day, I've been walking now. I'm, I'm getting back into that because I, physically I couldn't for so long. You don't realize how badly that makes all your joints hurt and how, like, just hurting your foot or something makes you, like, makes everything else feel bad, you know, or just keeps you from doing things. 
But when I walk really briskly, when I get to a cul-de-sac, I try to jog the cul-de-sac and that is difficult still with my foot, like really difficult to jog, just things that you didn't realize you could do. So Brad and I, even especially after going to Disney and stuff and kind of feeling our almost, well Brad's 40, but feeling my almost 40 year old feels, I'm like, we need to get this, we need to snatch this up, not for looks, not for anything, don't change the way I look. I just feel like I need, to, I want my joints to feel good. So I don't know, but, but walking, I like that, but then it's also impact, which is not good for my foot. But I know my foot needs to move and stuff, but I'm like, I just want like an old school elliptical. I just want to sling my limbs around, you know, just put me in something and sling me around. That's kind of my vibe. <laughs> Favorite place to vacation. I'm honestly not like a picky per. I, I love the history of going to like, like I said, like, a, like Paris or to go somewhere that's like where you can learn something or see some history. I love going to like California and seeing like old Hollywood places. I love places just even around where I live that have history. I like we're, we're going to like a really like historic hotel for our anniversary. I just love those things. Um, so I do get the value in that. But if I'm just truly thinking I'm checking out, I'm going on vacation, I want to go to a beach and I don't want anybody to talk to me and I want to eat at like dive bars and do you know what I'm saying? I just want to relax. What's your favorite pillow to sleep on at night? Okay, I will link to this thing. I don't know what it's called. I have them for Brad and I. And it's this pillow, because I like sleeping on a thin pillow, but I like hugging a fat pillow. Sometimes I like sleeping on a fat pillow. This pillow is so good, and we've had them for years. And um, it comes with a tube of stuffing, and you can put more stuffing in it or take it out, and it's the perfect pillow. Is that what it's called? The perfect pillow? Probably not. It's called something. I will link to it. It's so good. What are you looking forward to most this year? Um, being in just a good mindset. I don't know, last year really got dark with like a lot, like just with my foot and just with things that affect you in different ways. I was having a lot of like health things. I, you know, like I was, wasn't feeling well. Um, I was feeling down about that. I just feel good. I feel up, I feel happy. And overcoming things and knowing like, okay, I did get through that. And it puts you in a good mindset. I don't know, I'm just excited to continue to I'm excited to turn 40 I am I'm so excited to turn 40 I'm a big like milestone person like oh I've been doing this for so many years or I'm gonna be 40 I'm so proud of that I think it means something you know that you've lived and you've learned or anything from any types of anxiety or depression or anything a lot of times what gets me through that kind of stuff is thinking but I did that. I got through that. So now I don't have to worry about that now. It's, so it's almost like every year that passes, I feel more sure of myself. I feel better. I feel mentally better, you know? So that's kind of interesting. Do you feel one day you'll have a different career or do you consider yourself semi-retired? I'm definitely not semi-retired, although I am going to retire early, very early. Brad and I both, like, we have planned that. And that's why I like to, yeah, you might make a lot of money, but I don't see it because I put it away from my retirement. And I've always kind of been like that. So when I see like, oh, buy, just buy a new house. Just keep putting your money into new things. I'm like, I don't want to. I want to be able to, I mean, my gosh, when I retire, like maybe I'll really be able to blow it out, you know. But like I'm really trying to be smart and save. And when someone's like, oh, my God, that sounds overwhelming. How do you do it? Just go see a financial advisor and get started. You can Anyone can get started no matter how much money you have. If you have 25 cent go just go start to see a financial advisor to plan your future and that helps your mental clarity too a lot um and oh my god a different career what the heck i mean i don't know y'all like I, like i don't know my thing I, i'm not like okay i work for the city i'm doing this x y and z or i'm i work at this i don't have a job like that like but but what i do is all encompassing but like you know, we're making money from investments that we started in our early 20s. You know, I've got, you know, and then when you do, like when we did sell our house and we got, you know, the profit from that, like you're naturally making money off of that if you invested it wisely or if you put it in the right account or whatever. But again, you have to go see someone. You have to do the right, you know, set that up the right way and stuff. Um, but even just YouTube, when I started it, it was literally didn't think I could make money off of it, but you were purely making money from the ad revenue. Well, then that tinkered off. Even if you had millions of views, ads weren't pay ads were paying nothing. So that's why a lot of people stopped. Um, but then it was like LTK came along, reward style at the time. And that was wonderful because I was like, wow, I don't have to depend on brands to like sling stuff at me to be paid to talk about. I can talk about whatever I want. And that's why I think affiliate links are so 
genuine and great. And that's kind of how I've continued with this and building that. Um, but still, I would love to come on here and just share and talk because we built a community. So that's not really about money doing this. You know, and then naturally because of those things, you do work with brands. And I love getting brand deals and working with things like that. Um, so it's just a lot of different things. Our podcast, I mean, y'all, I've never slung anything. I'm not like starting a million different brands, which is not great if you do. But I've just never felt like that's something I'd want to do, you know, to then say, okay, buy this product, buy X, Y, and Z. I have never, ever done that. I've done things with brands like, you know, I've helped a brand create a palette or something that they approached me for. But I'm not starting business or saying, hey, buy my merch, buy my this or that. So I'm proud that any the, the one thing that I have sold over the years is our podcast. It's a true conversation. It's uplifting. It's helpful. It's entertaining. And I'm selling something, selling something real. So that's what I love. And it's five bucks a month. My God, you could, it's like, you're spending more than that on like garbage coffee every single day. There was less than a cup of coffee, but I'm just saying like, you know, that's been great. And so I'm, I'm so proud. I am proud of everything that I do because it's genuine and it's honest. And I feel like not a lot, there's not a lot of things that you, there's not a lot of, I don't want to say professions, but there's not a lot of things that you can really, I mean, there is, but I, like noble things, sure. Am I doing something noble? No. So I'm not saying it's a noble thing. I'm saying it's an honest thing. Like, where else can you make a living off of being yourself? Now that I'm thinking, there's probably a million different answers, but I'm proud of that. You guys are like the nicest. This is so much, and I have like, I, I'll never get through all these. There's so many good things, so many good questions. Um, but we've gone for an hour, and we need to stop because y'all got things to do, okay? Y'all need to go live your lives. <laughs> but, um, but you guys, thank you for spending time with me and for, um, I don't know, I love to share. I don't want to say for being interested enough to stick around because I don't think I'm, like, interested. But I'm just saying, you know, hopefully that helped you get to know me a little better and was fun and interesting. And um, if you had any of those questions, maybe hopefully I answered some of your questions. Pick up some of these items, uh, follow my LTK, and do the little bell thing so that you'll get notified so that we can shop the LTK sell together in a few weeks. Go ahead and start prepping for that, um, which I think is really cool. Um, and you wanna do that anyways, because then you can get like my everyday things, every post. And then, like if you're ever curious about anything, like, oh, I like that table. You can just go on there and search them up. Like, everything's linked there. So I think that's cool. It's in your hands. Um, so I think that's fun. And you guys, I just really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate y'all. And I always think it's cringy when, oh, I love you. But I do, like, truly, when you've built a community and it's, like, real, I do love you guys. I'm so thankful that y'all are here and that y'all have... I don't say like made me who I am because I am who I am, but I do feel like all of these situations from in the beginning dealing with like seeing hate and seeing like people pick you apart and, and I never stopped and I continued going, but then also met so many great men and women, mostly women, but a lot of great guys too, girls that are supportive and that have said nice things and that have given me a fun outlet that has then, you know, turned my life into what it is or that has made me like me, even the type of mom that I am or the type of wife that I am or, um, it is really special and I really appreciate you guys a lot. And, um, yeah, follow me on Instagram and I'll take you along with me for Brad and I's anniversary trip. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.